feet, let us pray. Take your hands straight in the air. Lord Jesus, we appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for allowing us, God, this opportunity to be here. We ask you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, as freedom has been spoken over us. Oh, I thank you, God, that we lay hold of that. We apprehend that that has apprehended us. And so because you have apprehended us with freedom, God, we today, we exercise our freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. So today, in Jesus' name, we will break out of our chains, break out of our bondages, break out of our roles, and we will worship you in Jesus' name. Come on, worship him in your own land. Come on, shout in this room, make some noise in this room.
church how to be a worshiping church. I'm trying to teach a church how to be a people that know how to worship God in spirit and in truth. They don't care about what they got on. Don't care about who they're sitting next to. Don't care about the agenda on the program. All they do is they come to engage the presence of God. Is there anybody in the room today that came to have an encounter with Jesus? Oh! My God.
tell you something. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. I'm tired. I don't feel 100%. Right. I got a banging headache. Let me tell you, I got a banging headache right now. Headache, banging, 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 banging. Like tired, physically tired. Just want to be in a bed somewhere. Uh -huh. Some covers over me. But when it comes to the presence of God, you have to learn how to deny yourself. And when you've grown up in God, you don't wear your condition on your shoulders. When you've grown up in God, you know how to release yourself from yourself. You learn how to make Him King, and you know how to make Him Lord. And he does another thing. Even if he don't take my headache away, it still don't stop him from being Lord. You're going to grow up in the things of God. That's the kind of stuff you've got to learn how to say, you know what, God, I mean, I feel like it. We all don't feel like it sometimes. But we have to learn how to deny ourselves and give God the praise that he's due his name. Lift your hands right there one more time. I just want to make sure he's right. At this time, Evity is coming to the stage. Give it up for Evity, y'all. Now, y'all gonna have to forgive my voice. It's, um, I had to host a uh, Christian Unity basketball game yesterday, and um, my voice is a little ugh, but it's okay, because it still work, and I'm gonna do some poetry for you guys. Is that okay? All right. Let me get this set up, hold on. It's, 
it's actually more empowering to, to know that a grown man can lift his hands, can shed tears for an almighty God. So I, I love, I love this piece because it relates to so many young men out there. So um, the title of the piece is, I used to want to be a thug. And yeah, that's true. So here we go. In case you missed it the first time, the name's Church Boy. But guess what? I used to want to be a thug. Yeah, that's right, I said it, a thug, you know. Hardcore rapping, pants sagging, Jeezy and Wanker talking about trapping while to fucking the other, my brother, that thug passion had me in the club straight acting. Must have been watching too much Kevin Hart because I began thug clapping at any thug I saw yapping. And in my most intimidated voice, I would shout, say one more word, and I'ma smack the best out of you. But I ain't never do it. See, I was new to this lifestyle. I had never did this before, a virgin. I just wanted to try something new and get my feet wet, surfing until I went in too deep like surgeons. Now I'm dancing with the devil, flirting. Thought I was living that real life, but my life was just silver, sterling. See, all you had to do was give me $100 and half a brick and I guarantee you I could have made it flip. I was so persuasive that I could make Flavor Flav cut his braids and get a ball shave. So smooth with my talk that I could make Rev Run take a walk. My hustle game was so equipped with tricks that I could even make Slick Rick sell his eye patch for a quick fix, I'm telling you. I straight wanted to be a thug. All I needed were a couple of drugs to put on a triple beam, a couple of guns to aid in my money scheme, and a few golden horses in case I met a beauty queen, because yeah, I wanted to be a thug, but I mean, I still wanted to practice safe sex. Now we headed upstairs and before I got in her bed and put my third leg in between her leg, I remember what the word said about how your body is a temple. Now I gotta use this thing in between my temples and make the decision of whether or not I wanna be a Christian or give her body what it's really been missing. See, the church boy in me knew I had to do right, but I saw a lot of money to the left. But it's funny because once that money left, all I was left with was a reality check. Now I'm going in circles steady, digging a deeper and deeper hole. Steady trying to play catch up because I can't muster up the strength to let it go. I was too busy focusing on chains and whips that I disregarded the one who was beating with chains and whip. But I ain't here to preach, I just want to educate and school you. Don't be a fool that's too foolish to recognize this flawed system is trying to fool you. Because me, I was screwed up in the medulla. I couldn't measure the extent of my flaws until I found the ruler. Now being a thug is no longer in my itinerary. My new mission is to be a missionary, and the old me, I left them at the cemetery. So to all my fellas, stop trying to be something that you're not. Stop talking about how many people you killed, drugs you sold, and jobs you did, when you still live at home in your mama crib. Thank you. Three o'clock in the afternoon, you out in public with your polo pajamas on, still looking like a slob. If somebody were to ask you, hey, where you working at now? They'll hit you with, <laughs> really, I'm in between jobs. Stop being a bum, oops, I mean thug, and start being a man. Let's show these women that chivalry ain't really dead. Learn how to cook something. Hold the door open for a lady. If you see a character something heavy, be of assistance. Don't be lazy. Instead of movies and Mickey D's, try taking out on a real date. The reason most men strike out is because they never step up to the plate. The only concern is getting a turn and earning another notch under their belt, but the cards have been dealt and they playing goldfish in a game of poker. I guess that's why their hearts are so jacked up that when they misuse a queen, they think it makes them a king, but really they're just a big joker. And I'm sorry for the nagging, but I had to attack the tragic pattern that I've seen happening in today's society because I'm really getting sick of the bull, dog. Don't get mad at me because I won't latex my pretext just because it penetrates deep and you can't take it raw, dog. So let's bring monogamy back to the forefront and stop treating life like a game of dice. And fellas, I'm being childish enough to make a woman a mother if you ain't man enough to first make her a wife. All right, the second one that I have, um, this one is actually one of my personal favorite ones. Um, well, I'll let y'all decide. Which one would y'all rather hear? I got two. Six o'clock love or red drinks? Do both? Where am I? One? Okay. Which one? Red dress. Red dress. We'll do red dress. All right. Just a quick sample. Uh, just a quick, uh, I like to give the disclaimer for this one. This is actually based on a true story. 
real quick. These are the thoughts that I had about a girl in church. She came in with a red dress. Real, real talk, yeah. So, <clears throat> so I'm sitting in church and I'm trying to read the Bible. I'm studying real hard too, you know, I'm trying to be more like my idol. I start reading a passage about how the workers are few, but the harvest is plenty. And the whole time I'm thoroughly reading the scriptures in my mind, I'm vividly painting the pictures, sort of like Leonardo da Vinci. And then that's when he hit me. I see old girl come walking down the aisle. She got a nice skin complexion with some light brown eyes. She stands about 5'9", but she's only 5'5", because of the four inch heels that appeal to her size. And Let's not forget that little red dress that barely makes it to her thighs. Man, why she had to come to church with that on? See, now I'm having thoughts I can't seem to let go. I want to get with this girl even if we got a creep on the low. And I ain't no punk, so I think I'm going to let her know. And by this time, my heart is beating fast, but I'm thinking of taking her nice and slow. And this is all happening after just reading the Bible five minutes ago. See how quick the devil can get your mind? See, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. Steal you away from your breakthrough. Kill the spirit that connects you to the son who establishes your relationship with the father, which in turn is how he will destroy you. You got to realize the slickness of the serpent and watch as he moves through the grass with hidden agendas and purpose, like trying to get the fortune and the fame, the cars and the clothes, and let's not forget the women and the sex. Because the last two were the ones that I used to struggle with. But hey, it's okay, I'm not afraid to admit it, nor will I fear it because I know that somebody else needed to hear it in order to overcome that same spirit of fornication. So today will you make the declaration that that spirit of fornication will no longer have reservation inside your temple of preservation because if his eye is on the sparrow, surely he's at your every location, which means you can call on him at any time with no hesitation. The question is, will you click over for the conversation? Or will you continue with your hesitation out of fear that God wouldn't want my participation, so instead you go to old girl in a red dress, spit game, start to kick it, talk slick, get the digits, now you on the phone late night caking, and the whole time God is sitting on call waiting. You got to do your part if you want to be free. You can't always rely on the reverend when James 4, 7 clearly says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That means that you got to do some resisting. I'm talking full-fledged repenting, spiritual cleansing, on your knees, on your stomach, on your face, submitting in the prone position. Because you can't get no lower than that. The Bible says if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he will supply all my needs. And what's the point of me being a Christian if that's something I don't believe? So as I come to a close, I pray that somebody was touched by the words that I had to speak. I was purposely meant to bring you this food for thought. I just hope that you are ready to eat. Thank you.
pray over them as they go on. Let's give it up for Everton Team Ministry. All right. So I want to have a conversation with you today because I think it's awesome that as you saw with those young people that uh, I was thinking about this today when we were going to have this conversation. You know, there are churches, and understand I'm not knocking what is being taught, but I just want to show you what I, what I mean by it. There are churches that, of course, they will call themselves, if you want to say, holiness churches. And they then, uh, they pride themselves on teaching individuals on living saved and sanctified lives, which is the truth. It is the truth. You ought to be holy because God is holy. So I'm not saying you can live anything. But in those same churches, you can see a single mother on the road with five kids next to her, and the youngest one is one. And she's been in that church all of her life. But the church is teaching something about all of this, this holiness, but then you see it's not manifested in the lives of the young people. That the practices and the principles for some they don't match, they don't mix, they don't mix. It's not getting into the deep roots of individuals. Because you must understand, if you're going to teach the truth, it must be laced with relationship. And what we're trying to do is teach our young people that, yes, holiness is right. You need to live right. You need to be holy. You can't be doing all kinds of stuff under the sun. But when you get a relationship with the Lord Jesus, it regulates your life. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to teach a relationship. And the one thing I love about Equation Church is, yeah, we have people that come up here pregnant. Yes, we do, just like every other church. But it's not as often as I thought it would be. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. We just, we, we talk, we'll talk real talk to that. Because it's not like I'm not, we ain't sitting here with all of this. Well, she's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant, she's pregnant. She pre no, not up in here. We have individuals that have made up their mind that they're going to live in a relationship with the Lord Jesus and they're going to do it right. So, equation, give yourself a hand. You young ladies, y'all are awesome. Y'all keep doing what it is God called y'all to do. And y'all keep living right, man. Uh, y'all keep doing what it is God has called you to do. So our scripture today for y'all that need to preach, you know, <laughs> is on our screen for you. It is 1 Timothy 4 and 12. We're going to base this up based off of our conversation today. The Bible says, let no one despise your youth. Let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Let me read it to you one more time. It says, let no one despise you. Basically, it's saying, don't let anybody look down on you or discount you because you are young. But it says, then, be an example. So he's telling a person that is young that they can actually be an example at their age. So that means you don't have to wait until you're old to be an example to the believers. That's what the scripture is saying. But it says, be an example to the believers, it says, in word, so that means in conversation, not only just in what you say, but in lifestyle, in word, in conduct, how you carry yourself as young people, in love, that means if you so saved, you sanctified, you feel with the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, you should also be a lover of people. In love, in spirit, so that means you need to be spiritual and not be carnal. Walking around in the carnality of this world, all you care about is the latest J's, all you care about is your hair doing your nails and your shellac and all of that stuff. You need to care about, you know, the things of faith. And then also impurity, so that means you need to live a pure life, a sanctified life, which means this, not a life of perfection, but a life of separation. Hear me. It's a life of separation. It is setting yourself apart so that God can use you. It is saying that I can't do what every young person does in our generation because if I do that, then I look like the world. And what, what do I mean by the world? Because I got to go to Target just like the world go to Target. So that means we were the same. Oh, so do that mean I look like the world? That ain't what the scripture's talking about. It's talking about in the way that we think. Our mentalities have to be different because the the... Religious will say, y'all are worldly church because of where y'all have churches. But you must understand the mentality is different. So we're not being like the world. We're being transformed. So that purity that is there in our lifestyle, we separate ourselves out so that God can use us. And so we have Evan we have Jamar here, and we're going to kind of talk about this. We're going to have a real talk today so that you as adults can understand that all of your kids, we're going to try to help be there for your kids. I got a teenager. Your kid ain't, all of your kids ain't sleeping around. All of your kids ain't, ain't wasting their time. Some of your kids are focused. Some of your kids do have some goals. And if you would sit down and maybe have a conversation with them, you may actually find out how smart your kid actually is. 
Our team should be saying, Bishop, that's what's up. For real. Because I remember, man, I got saved at 15 years old. Y'all can maybe tell y'all, but I got saved at 15 years old. And once the Lord saved me, it really changed me. Uh, but because I had habits that I had before I got saved, it took some time to break some of that stuff. But I wasn't a bad kid. And it was sometimes where I, got, I felt like I got yelled at or I got scolded because I had the same desires that the majority of my friends had. But sometimes I did it, sometimes I didn't. But I was really trying to grow in my, in my relationship with God. Can y'all tell me, you know, how do you grow in a relationship with God and how do you stay safe, stable at a young age and stay focused on your relationship with Jesus? There you go. Okay, I know for me, um, it took a while. I've always, I grew up in the church, you know, praying grandmother, Southern Baptist Church, I was all the way, definitely religious. But it took, it wasn't until I'm 25 now, it wasn't until 22 when I understood the true, a true relationship with Christ. And when I had that experience, it was, it was, it changed my life completely. Like it turned me upside down. And I knew that I had to surround myself with people that believed the same thing that I had. As I did, as well as get in the word, go to Bible study. Like I forced myself to go to service all the time, go to church Sunday, go to church Wednesday, just so I won't be tempted to do the things that I used to do, or in the way, um, or do the worldly things that I used to do. So that is how I stay grounded at a young age, at 22, and still today I'm in Wednesday night Bible study when I can. I'm coming to church because I know that if I don't get that nourishment, I don't get that trick, that um, being fed by the word, then I will start to slip. It won't happen all of a sudden, but I'll, see, I'll look back and like, oh, what's happening? What's happening? So I've surrounded myself by people that believe in the same thing I do and encourage me as well. That's, that's how it works for me. I'm pretty much the same way. Um, I'm a PK for all of you guys who know what it is. Preachers can be a pastor's for you. So long, you don't go with it. I mean, you're a sinner. And I lived up to that. PKs are the worst ones. Yeah, I lived up to that name. Um, you know, but I definitely agree. You have to surround yourself. Once you say that, you know, I'm going to commit my life and I'm going to dedicate to God, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people because it's tough out here. I'm not going to lie. It is, it is definitely challenging. At our church, I, I like to, um, we, we like to say, church is almost like a gas station where you come and you get refueled because going Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday during the day, it's like you come to Wednesday church, Wednesday for a Bible study. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, people are draining you, they're taking, they're taking a lot out of you, you know, they're challenging you in different ways, they're messing with your mindset physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, definitely. So coming to church, it, it helps you get refueled, it helps you get that word to implant in your heart, and then you, you take it home, and then that's why you got to be in your word, you got to you gotta read that word, you got to let the Lord speak to you and build that relationship up, because... It's challenging out here, and there, there were a lot of times when, um, I would say, we fell by the wayside. So, you know, you gotta stay grounded. You gotta keep your mind in that word of God. You gotta have that same mind as God. You gotta surround yourself with people like that because everybody know, everybody got that one person that, hey, let's go to the club, or hey, let's do this, let's do that. And you know when your spirit is not right, but you always have that that tug like, mm, I kind of want to do it. God know my heart. No, no. You need to surround yourself with people who have that same mind because I struggle with the conduct part. That was my work. That was my hardest one because I could love you all day, but it's, you know, the people are looking at your actions and my actions didn't always live up to what I was saying. And I had to, I had to correct myself and I had to see that. So definitely surround yourself with the, with like-minded people is the best thing that I can say because that's what I have to do. I started praying really hard for them, and I saw a change in their life as I changed in my life. So, you know, they say, get me friends and whatnot. Like, those people have been with me since the beginning, so they're going to be my friends. But I started praying for their lives and that they'll change as well. And I graduated and saw a change in them as well. So now we just all love them. Yeah. So, Jamar, you said you're a barber. Yes, sir. Are you good? I'm the best. A one day, take her on the side, fade in the back, raise a line. I do it all. Because uh, this barber I went to last night, I wasn't too impressed. <laughs> at all, so I might need to come see you. Anyhow, I got you. Um, <laughs> I'm just, you know, sidebar, I got it, so we might as well talk about it. Um, so help me understand this thing as far as young people and the church. What are young people looking for as it pertains to the church? What are we looking for? What do we want? Why do we come? As, that's a good one. As young people, I'll even put my, 
I'll still say I'm young. I'm 40. I just turned 24. Yeah, I'm 24. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever. So, uh, I say that with me personally and like with the youth at our church, we, we really want, we need that spiritual maturity to help us grow further in Christ, but we also need that physical connection. And by that I mean we need that person who we can relate to on, on a physical standpoint. Like, I can tell, I know that you can relate to you because um, your, your hip, I guess, they, like they say nowadays, the young folks say nowadays, you, 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 you're hip, you're cool, you know, you got your swag together and all that. You can definitely relate to the- It's on 7.5 today. <laughs> You can definitely relate to you that they can come to you and they can they know that I can come to pastor about anything that's going on because it looked like he done been through what I've already been through, but on a spiritual standpoint, he's mature enough to help me grow. He's not gonna he's not spiritually, I guess, on the same level as me, so that I'm not gonna be able to learn anything because he don't know like he don't know more than what I know, so what I'm coming in for. But spiritually, you're more mature and you can help him grow more in Christ. So I personally think that that's what I look for, and after talking to a lot of the youth in my church, I know that that's really what they look for. They need somebody who they can relate to because everybody know that and I don't really want to go to the so and so because they ain't gonna they they gonna judge me or they gonna say this or they gonna say that. I need somebody who I can relate to. Like I know what you've been through. Now let me help you out. Mm -hmm. You know that's what I think that the youth are really looking for now. That is our school. When I um, moved here in August. None of them was cooking at all. Um, the word was great at most of some of the churches, but the atmosphere wasn't there. Or like I felt awkward standing up, raising my hands to praise God, and everybody else was sitting down. Like I was the one that was in the wrong. You know? I was like, no, this is not what it's supposed to be. So I came here, um, was invited by one of my fellow um, Washington people. Um, came here, and on the first day I joined. Now that's kind of awkward, you know, you test it out. But I just knew this is where I was supposed to be, and I, I've been here since then. Um, but when you talk to the youth, you, um, the youth in our sessions, they tell me that they like it because they can, they can be who they are here. They, it's fun here. They enjoy being here. It starts late, so they have to get up early. Um, <laughs> and so they really enjoy the atmosphere that we that we've uh, created here at Equation Church, and they just like the family and the, just how that we're embr how we embrace the youth here. So I know that's the word that's from the youth. Here. That's good. That's good. Well, tell me this. You know, in this generation. Uh, that we have in the world today. It seems like things are getting more wicked. The music, all the music is just laced with sex. Like, that's everything. It's like, how, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, because it seems like it's so much harder to withstand temptation because temptation is thrown at you constantly uh, by our world system. How do you guys, and be practical, you know, how do you guys stand strong in the face of temptation? How do you stand strong in the face of, you know, things pulling at your relationship with Christ? How do you stand consistent in things pulling at you with your relationship with your local church? What do you do that makes you to be that example that other young people should follow? Um, I'm going to be honest. I haven't always been the same, the sanctified person that you think I am right now. Um, <laughs> if you think that. Um, and I used to, and I used to, I, music used to be my thing. Like I used to, you won't believe it, but I'm going to tell it. I used to have a 12 in the back of my car. I had a flip out CD, single window, like this B end of, I promise you, I promise you. I don't know, believe it. I know you won't, but I promise you. Just because that was my environment. Like I was with the, I hung out with all the, the B boys and all the girls. Like that was what we did. We went to the club every Saturday, right? Like, that's the typical thing that we did. So music was my everything. I had the latest mixtapes, all that good stuff. Selling them on um, DJ. The bass tapes. <laughs> my uh, DJ name was DJ E. Field. Like, I, I was really like, I was <laughs> You was a DJ? <laughs> Are you serious? I didn't even know that. Oh, I got all jokes in the world for you. <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> so, but when I grew up, I mean, I grew up, but I grew up in the church, so I knew a different way. I knew a different way, but I didn't want to live that way because I always knew that God would be there. Like, he'll be there. I'll go to him whenever I'm, whenever I'm ready, whenever I'm done living this lifestyle. But things start happening. A lot of things start happening to where now that I have this relationship with Christ and I see myself slipping maybe, I go back to the times that where I lived that lifestyle, how 
really depressed I was and how lost I was and who I really didn't know who I was because that's me being the blood DJ, that ain't me. And so I go back at that time now to this day when I see myself slipping like F do you really want to go back down that route? And I say, no, no, no. So I just start back with my music, start back with my words, go back to my journals that I wrote about myself and like, no, that F is dead and gone. Like, it's just over with. So I have to reflect constantly of like where he's brought me, where he's brought me from and where I want to be and where I want to go. Ah, oh boy. I guess it's, since you didn't got real with it, I'm going to get into it, real with it, too. Okay. I, uh, I'm a Christian rapper as well as a boy. Um, I've been rapping probably since I was about eight years old. Music was, hands down, the biggest influence in my life. I am a 90s R&B fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. That 90s R&B. You know 90s R&B, you know 90s r and I mean, Tank, g I love all of them, but, but, that influence on my mind, you was a DJ? You was a DJ. I, I, DJ. I got the CDs. How many people knew that? High school. Okay. Probably only five people know this, and I'm about to make this on the web guy, though. Eight people know that? Like I said, I've been a PKK my whole life. I was a sex addict, and I had three abortions. Mm. So. Tell me. That was, and I know that music was my biggest influence. Like I said, I love that 90s R&B, and baby, that 90s R&B had a lot of babies during that time because of that music. And, and music really influenced me. And like I say, this I've been I've been a Christian rapper since I was about eight years old. So you know, I grew up in church, writing about writing music about God. But yet, like I say, my conduct behind closed doors. I was doing all kind of stuff that people didn't know about. And like I say, only five people besides our church, nobody at my church even know that. I'm a whole deacon at my church. You don't nobody even know that. You know, I share it with people who, you who stream, y'all know that. Yeah, right. Equation y'all know that. For my church. But yes, that that was that was I I I had that addiction in me and that's why the poems that I did, they kind of related to the women and, and the thoughts that I had and how I changed it because I not only tell the story, but I also tell like the, the, the victory that I got from it, how the Lord delivered me from it because it ain't always about what you did, how you did it, how are you delivered from it, and how can you let somebody else get the Lord from it? And that's why I write the poems that I do because they're like, what? You just want to be a thug or what he had? Nasty thoughts about a girl in church. Yes, I did, but listen to the whole poem. Listen to how I was released from it. James 4 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I I know that when that and being a Christian does not mean the temptation is gonna be gone. Right. Not at all. I have learned because when I was like, I turned 18, yes, I give my life to God. Good. I ain't gotta deal with none of this temptation no more. No. Temptation come even more now because the devil's like, dang, I can't. He, he trying to live for God. He gonna try and get other people to live for God. So I gotta try and get him to get away, and I gotta tempt him even more than what I did before. So temptation does not just totally disappear when you give your life over to God. It just gives you the ability, the the power and the spirit of God gives you the ability to resist that temptation that you couldn't before. So. I really just, that's what I, I love talking to the youth or to the, the young adults and telling them because I'll be the first to admit that I done did everything across the whole spectrum. Except smoke weed. I haven't smoked weed, but I did learn how to roll a blunt. I did learn how to roll it because I was in St. Louis having more grain. So I, they taught me how to roll it, but I just never smoked it. So I know how to roll one, but everything else I done probably did. Sure. <laughs> I never did. I never did. So that was, that was uh, you know what it was? Because I'm a barber, right? And listen, when you cutting her at 8 o'clock in the morning and somebody just smoked weed and you got to line their mustache up and then they like take that deep breath and then that weed breath, got, I'm like, I don't want my breath to ever smell like that. So I never smoked weed. That, that's the reason why I did it too. So yeah, but other than that, I did everything and I'm just saying like, it ain't nothing you probably even did that I haven't done, and I can I can tell you about it because I still get tempted nowadays too. But I'm, I, it's all about resisting that devil, keeping your mind focused on Christ, and living that sanctified life, and being able to. The closer you get to God, the easier it is to resist. It ain't gonna never disappear. It ain't gonna never just have a non-resistant temptation, but it gets easier the closer you get to God. So there we go.
It was my 90s signature, shall we? Tell you gotta get you going. I ain't going to play the rest of it, but that was... <laughs> Sometimes send a choice. <laughs> you know, just some, you know how you just have some music in your iPod and you have it on shuffle, and you know you just got done listening to Jason Nelson shifting the atmosphere, and then next thing you know, Tupac comes on. I'm like, pray for me. <laughs> but let's talk about this whole music thing because you know when I got saved, when I got saved at 15 years old, I had all of the music like of the 90s, right? Um, and I had them, you know, we had some little CDs, you know, back then, and some tapes. Like, my gospel music was in tapes. <laughs> my worldly music was in CDs, you know, so that means I ain't listened to as much of my gospel as I did my, you know, my. I'm going to have to tell y'all a story about me in high school one day. When y'all when y'all really love me, then I'll tell you that story. Uh, Candace, I think, you, yeah, you don't remember that. Okay, all right. Yeah, we went to high school together. The Lord was still doing the work on me. Um... But um, I, when I really got saved and I was giving my heart to the Lord, I'll never forget it. I went downstairs in my room, and I took all of my CDs, all my worldly CDs, and I threw them all in the trash. All of them. Every single, every single one of them. And that was at the time when uh, All Eyes on Me was like, that was my, like, I don't know if Jason is here today, but Jason, I was like a Tupac head. Like, that was all I listened to. And I, when I threw that in the, in the trash, I cried. I'm not lying, man. That was a two big CD set. That was like the CD was $21, $24. $24. Dude, I cried. For real. Man, I threw that. <laughs> That's why it's on my iPod now. I just had to go. I, went, I had to go back to pick it up. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, man, I threw it away because I, that music has such an influence on me at that age. How do you minister to teenagers that all they are hearing and watching is counteracting everything you are teaching, everything I am teaching and preaching, Kevin Hart, I mean, everything is kind of like counteracting what we're doing. How did you guys win? How did y'all cross over by the temptation, the thing that used to get you, you stop doing it less and less, you start listening to it less and less. Did y'all do anything radical, like throw away your CDs or disconnect with anybody that helped you stay on, on track? I remember going to like the youth church at my youth service at my church, and they always say, throw away your CDs, throw away your CDs. I'm like, I'm not doing all that. Um, but I remember one day I was in college, and you know, he was, the Lord was really working on me in my last senior year of college, and I gave my CD case to my coworker. I just said, here, take it. But I kept one CD. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. We're going to be honest here. I'm going to tell you what the CD was. Right, so don't kids. judge me. Don't judge me. But I kept it. I kept Kaya, her CD. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What CDs y'all got while y'all sitting up here yeah. judging us? Yeah. 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 I didn't hear some of y'all. Oh, my yeah. bad, Bishop. Yeah, it was, it was that song that talks about the God in the city, but whatnot. But I actually threw it out the window probably about three or four months ago. I was like, you know what? Why am I holding on to this? I don't even want to listen to it. I just threw it out the window, driving down the highway. So it's gone. It's good. She got delivered and set free. Praise break. But when I And the closer you get to Christ, like the easier it is to like the spirit gets to you. So when you start listening to that music, you just feel uncomfortable. You're like, oh, I don't want to listen to all that right now. So you can listen to it for a couple minutes. You're like, I'm done. Like it's not, it's not a substance. Like you're not telling me anything that I'm going to grow. Now I think it's more of a mind change, like a mm -hmm. mindset that you have to get. Like you're not going to automatically change your mind from listening to Jay Z or whatever you want to listen to. But when you when you start mm -hmm. to educate yourself and learn that what they're saying is not really going to get you anywhere in life and like it's not really nurturing you, it's not feeding you, then you're going to realize, oh, I want to hear something where I can actually grow, where my spirit can grow, where my intellect can grow, where I can be somewhere. I can, like, Gucci Man is not teaching you anything that was, that was my person. I don't know. Put ice cream. <laughs> well, ice cream. Like, they're not really telling you anything of substance. Yeah, it's good music, yeah, it's good writing music, but what actually listen to what they're saying? Like, are you, where are you going to go with that? Like, in actual 
that. So that's what changed my life. When I actually was like, I'm getting dumb if I listen to this music. And I'm not dumb. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, you see what CD was it you had? The Tupac? All yeah, Eyes On All Eyes On Mine was... Mm-mm, mm-mm. I, I'm 24. R. Kelly, I did listen to it. too young for that. Yeah, but I had, I went, I went, come a little bit later on down the years. The next guy, uh-uh, before that, Usher Confessions. Uh, yeah. That's where I wanted them before she came from. Listen to that CD. Throw your Usher CDs in the trash. Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. The Usher. Yeah, that it what it was, I like I had to listen to the words. That was a, that was both good and bad because once I listened to the words, I'm like, hmm, it's a real good way to get girls, right? Usher saying there, I ain't even gotta say nothing, just press the track and you just look in the eyes and let him say everything that I need to say. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was how I looked at it, but then I had to flip it, but then I had to flip it because like I say, I started reading the Bible more. I started I was always in church, but I started actually being at church and listening to what the pastor was saying now and knowing that the Lord is all no matter where you go, no matter what you do, the Lord is always there. If you say that you live for God, then his spirit is in you. That means that wherever you are, that's where your spirit is. So if you in the room with a girl or ladies with a guy and you thinking about going there, I had to, that all that used to always click like, man, that God is right, God is right here. Just somewhere in this room, but he's here. He know what I'm about to do. Like, uh. Oh. And that would, that would always, yeah, it'll kill the move, diffuse the whole situation. Because it'd be like, it's like, it's, God is your spiritual father. So it's always like, everybody knows when, you, when your parents finally let that one girl or that guy that you like come over, it was so uncomfortable because you, you know that your mama or your daddy is in the house somewhere. Really choke and you can't do nothing. You be like, I want to put my arm around you, but my mama go walk down here any minute and I don't want to do it. So it used to always, I get into that mode like, uh, oh yeah, my mama at work, you can come over or whatever. But then the the spirit would be like, oh, yeah, you know I'm here, right? You know I'm somewhere in this room, so you might not want to do that. And I'm like, all right, my, my mama ain't here, but Father is here, and he used to always kill the mood. He used to always use the situation, and I had it was always that that trigger. One thing my pastor told me is that no matter what you do, no matter what you were tempted with, and the Bible says, "If I did not work first, man, you can't pass." No matter what you do, where you at, anything like that, God is always going to give you a way out. Mm -hmm. People be like, oh, I couldn't, man, I couldn't do nothing about that. I mean, it was just, I was, we was in the room, the door was locked, and I couldn't, I ain't had no way out. She she stood in front of the door, and I couldn't, no, no, no. Because I, I used to do that. I had all the excuses. But like, man, uh, what had happened was, what had happened was, yeah, no, God will always provide a way out. Now, it's up to you whether or not you let your, let your spirit win, and you take that way out, or you let your flesh win, and be like, you know what, I'm just disregarding that love, what, what the Spirit just told me. No, it's, he's always going to provide you a way out. It's always going to be that little hankering in your spirit, like, yeah, I know I should be doing this. And that's that moment when you, when you should just totally stop whatever you're about to do, whether you're going to go smoke weed, whether you're going to go to the club, whether you're going to go out, do whatever. I, it was real quick story. We went out to... Uh, I forgot where we went. It was me. It was me. It was me and my boy and two other dudes, his boys. And they all was like, we all had went out. I rode with him. And they said that, hey, let's uh let's all go to the strip club. I ain't never been to the strip club. I ain't I don't even like going across the water. But he was like, let's go to the strip club. I'm like, I ain't going to the strip club. I ain't about that life. I can't do that. That's that's not me. Take me home first, then y'all can do that. They was like, no, nah, man, you coming, you ain't never been, whoop, whoop, blah, blah, blah. Like I said before, I watch the people who you hang with. 
because they will definitely try and influence you. Long story short, we ended up going to the strip club that night. I didn't mean to do it. I, I had excuses. I had excuses through the roof. See, what had happened was... Now he don't carry single dollars. Yeah, no more. See, <laughs> see, what had happened was he had... I was riding with him and... Like, no, no. I could have had a way out. I would... We was, we, was, we was maybe two streets over from my sister's house. I could have easily just called my sister, hey, come pick me up, blah, blah, blah. It was all, it's all, God will always provide a way out. That's basically what I want to say. There is no, no temptation that the devil will, will bring upon you that God will provide a way out for you with. He will never let that happen. So I just always want you to keep that in your mind because my pastor told me that and it's always been in my mind. There is no temptation that the devil will bring that God will not provide a way out for you with. So that's what really Let's give God a hand praise, would you? There's so much more we get for conversation about through. But uh, I really just wanted to, I, I want our teens to understand and know that uh, God has given you a blessing, um, and that is youth. Uh, he has given you youth, but maturity, that you're able to glean from, you know, the lives of us that not do just a little bit up the road from you, but us that have submitted to the process early enough in life that God matured us in enough time so that you can get the wisdom that you need and also the realness and the practicality that you need to be able to be what God has called you to be. Let me go ahead and say this to you. You will not be perfect. We made mistakes even being saved, giving our lives to the Lord. We made mistakes, but we kept our hearts pure toward God. And we ran back to God, and we ran back to church, and we worshiped God, and we praised God, and we got involved in the church, and we kept our minds occupied, and we disconnected from people. Tyron's been my longest, you know, friend for, for years, and even in the church, I had to disconnect from people in the church because they would at church be one way, but then as soon as church was over, be another and they were the most toxic because they would be the ones praise dancing, twirling, shouting every time everything started to happen. Then you know as soon as church was over, they was on cloud. You just knew it. And so we had to disconnect from those people because we were like, if we're going to do it, we're just going to be right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, God is not asking us for perfection because, yeah, I mean, John, you was crazy, though. Um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, we, um, we were not perfect, but we held each other accountable. When I first started dating Lady J, I did not go on a date with her alone. I took John or I took Tyler. Because, why did I get quiet? <laughs> My young people, oh, y'all sexless, sexless in here, right? If you want some wisdom and you're like, you don't want to mess some stuff up, then you got to make sure, well, I, I want to get to know her. Get to know her right. Because if you got to sneak and do it, then it must not be right. So, you know, man, just kind of stuff like that. I just naturally wasn't a drinker. I'm like you. I didn't want to smoke because I didn't want the, the, the my, I don't like the breath thing. Like, like my breath to be together. The drinking thing, I got drunk once, and I'll never do that again. Just once for me. Just too. once, and I'll never do that again. Yeah, it just didn't work for me. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, she just got wasted. You know, not Jesus wasted either. <laughs> Bottles up, I guess. <laughs> not, not, not the, you know, Jamar, if you want to not, if you're a man and you struggle with going to the strip club, then just keep 20s on you, because you're not going to give one 20 away. <laughs> That's one thing you won't do. You, you gotta have singles for that. You ain't gonna do that, right? <laughs> Until the Lord deliver you and set you free. That's just a joke. But <laughs> pray for us, pray for us, you're straight. But I'm just saying to you guys, man, like if you're gonna be what it is God has called you to be, then you gotta make some decisions and you gotta be connected to people, then you need to be a part of a church that can keep teaching you and training you and developing you, and then you have to give back. You have to give back to the thing that is giving back to you. And as you do that, then you're able to receive from what it is. You know, the reason why you're able to come here is because you're accepted here. We're not judging you where you are. But what we're saying is you can't stay where you are either. You have to allow 
allow somebody to speak into your life to push you to where you need to be. And that's your part of giving. You have to open yourself up. You have to be transparent. And you have to come and say, I'm struggling. I'm dealing with this. I need to change this. You can't walk around here like you perfect. Because let me say this to you. Those individuals that are extremely religious and they hide everything are the ones that are struggling the most. Because I used to be that. I used to be that. I used to put on the suits, put on the ties, have the Christian language, all the above, shout, clap at the right time with all of my crap in my closet. But the one thing I love about this is now is now I don't have no crap in my closet. I'm like, here, take my skeleton key, take my phone, do whatever you want. There's nothing to hide now. Because I got a relationship with Christ, I got nothing to hide. That's what relationship did for me. It gave me the time and the grace to get my life together. Let me say this to you young people, that when you get a relationship with the Lord Jesus, you don't no longer have to move on people's time anymore. You move on God's time. Amen. And you say, God, this is what I'm dealing with. I put it on the altar. I say, God, crucify my flesh. Teach me the word. Fill me with the Holy Ghost so I can have some power to withstand some temptation. And then put me in an environment where people are pushing me to my destiny. And then naturally, the stuff that you used to want, you won't want anymore. Because your future becomes so attractive to you that you get so set on that that you only want to accomplish that. Tell me, I'm trying to push you guys to a place where your future and your destiny becomes so attractive to you that anything that will distract you from it, you're willing to let it go. Because you don't want to miss it. Lift your hands in the air. Lord Jesus, we appreciate you today. We love you for all of these beautiful people that are here for our teens. I just ask you, oh God, that everything that we had in conversation today, that God, it touched somebody's heart. Yeah, it wasn't preachy, but God, I'm just asking you that by the Spirit of God, what truth needed to be released in somebody else's life, it did. And I'm asking you, oh God, that those that may not have felt like they received anything, that they are the examples of those. That God, they don't find themselves struggling in that same kind of thing, but they're actually the example to the believers in word, in, in, in conversation. And in purity. So God, I'm asking you, God, that you keep your heads of protection over this church. I thank you, oh God, that as we continue to walk in the word, that God, you continue to strengthen us. And as we walk in the spirit, we keep in step with the spirit. And I just ask you, oh God, that you just overflow this place with information and revelation that transforms our lives. Keep our young people. Allow us as adults to be examples to them so that they don't make the same mistakes we made, but they change the world. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a great big hand. Praise everybody. Thank you. Listen, let's do this really quick. They're going to pass you some offering envelopes. Let's be faithful in our giving here. I'm going to start a series next month entitled Saved and Paid. And it's not going to be all about giving, but giving will be a great piece of it because we need to talk about finances. We need to talk about how our money advances the kingdom of God, but also God don't want us to be walking in poverty nor lack as well. So we must understand how to tie these things together. So anyhow, with that being said, we have a weekly budget of $2,000. Let's help us reach that $2,000 today. If you're giving by debit or credit, make sure you have your first, your last name, your address, and your telephone number so that you can get proper credit for your giving. If you are making a check, make the check payable to the Equation Church. If you are a guest here and you believe that all the church wants is your money, then let the offering plate pass you by. Because really, it ain't really about your money. It's about your heart. And so if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus and your heart is connected to him, then I want you to sow today. I need Some of us have the gift of giving. And you know that God has put on your heart to sow and give. If the Lord is dealing with you about sowing, I need you to sow as well today. Help us reach this, reach this $2,000 goal all together as a community. God, I thank you for your individuals, and I praise you, God, that you give me a seed to sow into the kingdom of God. Take a second, if you will, fill out your offering envelope. We'll receive it in one moment.
want your offering up a little completed, if you'd hold it straight up in here. God, thank you for allowing us and giving us seed to sow. I'm praying a blessing over your people today as we sow in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. set for Saturday, August the 31st. We have flyers for you at the door. If everybody will take a few, we got 4,000 flyers, so we got more than enough flyers to pass out. The community day is going to be right on the parking lot on the 31st. If you signed up as a volunteer, thank you so much, but we also need additional volunteers. So if you want to volunteer for the community day, I need you to meet me at Starbucks this upcoming Tuesday at 7, did I say 7 or 7.30? 7 o'clock at Starbucks at 270 in Hanley so that we can have an informational meeting about what we need, how we need help, and the volunteers and kind of structure it out. So meet me this upcoming Tuesday at Starbucks at 270 in Hanley so that we can talk through the community day. Also, if you want to donate school supplies as well, we can take those as well. So over the next couple Sundays, if you guys will bring school supplies, you can even bring them on that day. I, I want to make sure that we bless our community in just a very tangible way. Uh, we have a couple that have been coming to our church. Let me tell you the story. Tyron was with me. Last Saturday night, it was about, after we got done doing our fellowship at the house, it was probably about 10 o'clock at night. We had all of this food that was left from the fellowship. And um, my wife was about to throw it away. And I got a check in my heart. And I'm like, we can't, I can't, we can't do that. We can't throw it away. We need to find somebody to go get these two. Now, I'm about to fly out to Houston the next morning at 6 in the morning. But I just got to check in my heart not to do that. And so she packed all the food up, and we drove down to the city. There's been a couple that's been coming here uh, to the church the last few weeks. Uh, and they gave us their address on a little piece of napkin. So we're driving through, driving up to their house, trying to find it. We couldn't find their house. We drive up here. We drive around there. Drive all around. We decide we're going to go back one more time and see if we can find this house. We go back around. We find our house. And they're opening the window. Who is that? Who is that? That's the bishop. The bishop is here. The bishop. I mean, it was crazy. It's like 11 o'clock at night. The bishop is here. The bishop is here. They open the door. We take them all of this food in the house. And what astounded me about these individuals is because they weren't begging for anything. They didn't, you know, bishop, I need this. I need that. I need none of that. Never. Never, never, never. And they said, they take me to their refrigerator. And their refrigerator was completely bare. Absolutely no food. Nothing. In their refrigerator. Nothing. And to see them have the joy of the Lord. With nothing. To see people that have everything, that have everything, and we have to push you to praise of God. You got everything. They have nothing. And to see their greatness, I, don't, I didn't know how we were going to feed my daughter. She starts school tomorrow. I didn't know how she was going to be fed. I'm just saying this to say this to you guys. That when you see stuff like that, it should do something in you. When you hear something like that, it should do something to you. That's what this community day is all about. It is helping those that may not have what you have. And they may look like you and act like you, but there are some people that don't have anything. And you better give back. You better give back. That's why some of y'all need to get out the country. Y'all need to go to Haiti when we go. And some of y'all some spoiled princesses. See somebody that don't have nothing, it will transform you. It will transform your mind. You will live with a different kind of purpose in mind that is to love God, help people, and change the world. So as you give, you allow us to be able to do that. So always keep that in your mind, man. When you give, it allows us to be able to love God, to be able to help people, and to transform and to change our world. So that's something needs your involvement with Community Day because we need to give back to this community and let them know that we love them. Say to you, Peter, if you will. I promise you, next week and the week after next, we'll be back on our regular time schedule, but let God be God. I ain't saying that. Let God be God. We will lift your hands in the air. Thank you for being with us. Lord Jesus, we praise you. 
we worship you, we glorify you, we magnify you. Let me hear your voice equation. We magnify you, we glorify you, we exalt you, we praise you. Thank you for giving us food. I thank you that I'm able to eat today after church. I thank you that I even got a couple of dollars to stop and get a Big Mac. Thank you for what I do have. So I will always give you the glory, always give you the honor for blessing my life with the little that I have, and I will give it back to you to glorify you in Jesus' name. Come on, shout Jesus in this room. Give God a great big hand of praise. Help us move some tables and some chairs. Worship God and see you next week.